All right, guys, so uh, what I got for you today is Crafter brushes. Uh, the style that we're, I'm going to be making right now is going to be uh, EP style Crafter brush. The core fiber, instead of being the EP fibers, is uh, Congo hair. Stuff is sold at uh, Fly Tires Dungeon. Really inexpensive, but some really good stuff. Then, just to give the brushes a little bit of added flair, the uh, last step is going to be some Starburst Dub, from, also from Fly Tires Dungeon. And my two choices for a craft for today are the Extra Select Crafter. This stuff has a little bit longer fibers than this stuff. This is just some uh, big sheets of uh, Crafter that I picked up at Joanne Fabrics for a couple of bucks. So yeah, let's get started. First thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a dubbing brush uh, device. This is one that I built my own. Uh, you can uh, do the same thing, build your own. Otherwise, there are several on the market. I've seen other guys use them. They're not too bad. But whatever works for you. Then the other thing you're going to need is a spool of wire. This is 32 gauge wire that I put on a old thread spool that it, I had used up. It's only 10 one thousandths of an inch difference between this stuff and the uh, dubbing brush wire that Uni sells. And I just like this stuff a little bit better. It's more convenient for me. So to get started, uh, you can't really see it over here. There's a hook that I have hooked up to a power drill. I'm just going to wrap this wire around it uh, two times. Then use the power drill to twist it up a little bit just so that it holds it in place. Just like that. I'm going to run my wire all the way over to another hook that is off camera. And this second hook is uh, spring loaded so when the dubbing brush starts getting twisted up it will compress. As you can see the wire just moved there because I compressed the spring. So I'm going to readjust the camera really quick and I'll be right back. This first brush that I'm making is going to be gray craft fur with a core of arctic blue Congo hair. So to get started, you take your craft fur and you just cut a bunch of it off like so. So once you got your pile of craft fur all cut, I like to try and align the butts as much as I can. It's not going to be perfect. And then I grab the tips with this stuff that I picked up from Joann's. I like to hold it about halfway down the bundle between the tips and the butts. And then you take a cheap comb and you just comb all the short fibers out of the butts that you as much as you can. These things really don't do all that much for you. So once you get that done you lay your pile of craft fur down across your table. As you can see here there's a little bit of a groove. That's where my wire is sitting. I just want a little bit of an overhang with this craft fur so that the wire has something to uh, hold on to and I'm getting as much length as I can out of this craft fur. So I'm just spreading this out with my fingers a little bit. And if you need more just go back and cut more like I have to do here. Okay so the next step is you take your Congo hair. Pick out a small amount from the rest of the hank. I'd say only about that much is all I'm going to need. And then you just cut it. So you don't want this core to be the full length. This is going to build up some uh, extra bulk in your brush when you, uh, when you wrap your fly. So what I'm going to do is these marks I have here, they're about an uh, inch long. So I'm going to measure this to be uh, about an inch and a half in length. I'm just going to cut this entire bundle to the same length. So 
So once you have your Congo hair all, uh, all cut, hold it in your hand like so and just comb the tips out, flip it over and do the same thing. This breaks the fibers free from each other. Congo hair has a tendency to want to stick together. So now what I do is I lay it out in my fingers, grab a small pinch and just lay it across the uh, the crafter that you just put down. So once you got your Congo hair all spread out nice and evenly, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this is holographic starburst stub, and I am just going to drape this over the Congo hair and the craft fur. This is just going to give it a little bit of internal sparkle or an internal flash, which for uh, big streamer patterns is kind of nice. So once you got your starburst stub all laid out or your uh, flash material laid out, you're basically done with this uh, section of the brush. I've got two other sections I'm going to make and I will be back really quick once I get those sections all made up and once I come back we'll start twisting this thing up. Alright guys, so now I'm back. As you can see I got uh, three distinctly different brushes here, but they're all the same thing. It's They're all uh, craft fur and uh, conga hair with some starburst stub. So once you get your brushes all laid out, next step is you take some dubbing wax and you run your wire oops, from your first uh, your hook that you had your spool of uh, wire hanging from back to where your twisting source is going to be and you run the wax up and down the wire just a couple of times and what the wax does is it keeps the materials in place while your brush is twisting up and the materials aren't going to get pushed from this end back up this way so once you got your uh, once you got your thread your not your thread your wire all waxed, you reattach the uh, wire to the hook that you initially started on. I wrap it around the hook twice, and then I do several wraps of the uh, wire from the uh, from the spool around your two strands that are holding your materials together. And this just helps lock that wire down in place so when you start twisting it up it's not going to become a big mess. Once you get that done, cut your uh, bobbin with your uh, wire spool off and put it to the side because you're done with it. Now the next step is to start twisting your brush up. What you do is you just slowly start out giving it some twists and this just all this does is while these materials start twisting up what it's doing is it's tightening this wire down so all the materials will have pressure on it for when you remove your table. So once you remove your table, turn the power on and start twisting. So now my spring load hook is about halfway compressed and this is a point where I take my dollar store comb and I just comb out all the materials and break all the twists and the mats out so that when you get to the end of the brush and you comb it out again you're not going to be breaking as many materials. So once you got your 
materials roughly combed and brushed out. Continue spinning the brush up until that spring is compressed all the way. So as you can see, I compressed that spring too much. The wire actually broke. But that's okay for my dubbing brush twister. This is usually a good indication to me that everything is locked in nice and tight. So what you do now is you take either your dollar store comb or what I'm going to use is I have this uh, nice slicker brush and you just go back and you brush all of your materials out again. So now once you got your brushes all uh, brushed out and the fibers are all uh, where you want them to be, just take a not good pair of scissors and cut your brush free from the device. Then these brushes I did, as you can see, they're three different styles. I have some bare wire in between them so they give me a spot to cut them off. So now I have uh, four inch section of brushes in different colors. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video. I'll hopefully be coming out with more of these here in the future. So, uh, just keep your eye out for those. I'll try to stick with doing uh, uh, a couple of uh, different brushes I know how to do that I've seen are effective. So, yeah, just keep your eye out for those. Uh, if you like the video, uh, go ahead, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time.